Liberty men's basketball season comes to an end on Wednesday afternoon here in Conway, South Carolina. 77-65 to the hands of the Winthrop Eagles in the first round of the Big South Conference Basketball Championship. I'm Alan York. Pleasure to be joined by two guys that know Liberty basketball better than anybody. Paul Nazigan, who does color analyst for us on the radio, and Tim Scarborough. You know the face. He's our color analyst on LFSN TV. And I'm going to start with you, Paul. The start for Liberty, 17-5. to Out of the gates, better than we've seen him in quite some time. What do you think led to that? Well, the first thing that Liberty did is came out with great energy and just started this tournament off with a bang, uh, really fired and in, uh, invigorated themselves. And then secondly, they really pushed the ball in transition. They liked that up-tempo style. It's really worked well for them the last couple weeks. And so that gave them a good start. And then also ball movement. On the half court, they really got the ball moving around. They scored some inside, some outside. And man, they just lit this thing up for about the first eight minutes. And then there was a timeout called by Pat Kelsey, head coach of the Winthrop Eagles. What exactly did he say in his huddle, Tim? And what do you think sparked a defensive resurgence for Winthrop? Well, I think it was more about what Pat did, not what he said. He put in his bench, and he had four guys who really brought energy. Alan, anytime you have a game where you're playing in the middle of the week at noon, it favors the team that's not favored, and that today was Liberty. Winthrop was the favorite team. They're probably the better team. They got off to a slow start, but once they got it going, and it was primarily those bench guys, they were seven for eight from the field during that stretch with zero turnovers. The starters had five turnovers, and they were shooting 23%. So it was not so much what he said. It was that he put the right kids in the game. And to his credit, he went back to his starters at the right time, and they rode it home. It was a six-point game at halftime. Winthrop goes on a 30-12 to run to take that lead at halftime. Liberty in the second half, Paul, tied it three times, unable to kind of get over the hump. Andrew Smith was at the foul line, as close to chances as Liberty had to maybe take in the lead. And they were just unable to do that. Some huge threes down the stretch by Winthrop that really opened up the gap. Yeah, and I, I think that was more credit to Winthrop's play than, than Liberty. Liberty did a great job making the run, cutting it, making some big baskets. But right when they got on the on the doorstep to take the lead, Winthrop answered. And that really is, is a testament to the quality of the team they are. Again, they were number four seed, but really it was really a possible two with only because of a tiebreaker scenario. So quality team you got to got guys that stepped up hit big shots when you needed them and and that you know Liberty had a chance to take the lead at the free throw line didn't and and Winthrop answers with two big threes and then again another two on the inside and just that that was pretty much the story and today was a microcosm of the entire year Leeds Liberty was unable to sustain and in the end, the opponent eventually made more plays down the stretch Andrew Smith gives his idea of what happened here today each time going down the floor, you got to be locked in, knowing that you got to get a stop. And sometimes they would hit a shot, and it would be a tough shot. We'd be contesting, but sometimes there's nothing you can do about that. You just got to get a stop the next time. Tim, we just heard Andrew talk about today and how it looked like a carbon copy of the entire season. When you look back at this year, the missed opportunities, what are some things that will stick out to you? I think you're absolutely right, Alan. It was a microcosm of what they, what we've seen throughout this entire year. I mean, Liberty has gotten off to good starts. They've been right there at the end of games, but they have so much trouble closing those games. And it really felt like deja vu all over again, to quote Yogi Berra, because when Liberty tied that game at 47, you just got the sense that Winthrop was still going to win that game. And I think I really don't have the answer as to why it happens, but I can tell you that after a certain amount of time and it happens so much that those kids think it's probably going to happen again. But to their credit, they battled back in the first half when they could have really taken a knockout punch from Winthrop, and they fought. Drew Smith was terrific during that stretch. Burris was really good and Reddick was good, and they got back into this game and tied it at 47. But really, Winthrop was just timely with their scoring, and when they when they needed buckets, their guards went and got them for them. And postgame, Dale Lair echoed the sentiments of junior forward Andrew Smith. I, I thought we were we built the lead by uh, playing for each other and with each other. We had three straight turnovers and a, uh, a quick jumper. And we, we got away from what we were what what we built it on, and uh, that's been kind of the story of our team, where we just can't sustain the 
unselfish play. Not that we're selfish, but we just uh, we, we can't. We just struggled this year, sticking to what we know was best, and uh, that was uh, certainly the case at that point. They they made a run, but it was fed off of uh, three turnovers and a quick shot. And now I guess it's not too early to start looking ahead to next year, Paul. Six seniors won't be with this team. A lot of experience, a lot of memories from last year are all gone. And I know Dale Lair is going to be looking at the cupboard, which is not exactly Bayer entering next fall. No, not at all. You know, you've got some big pieces in place. You know, if you want to call them a, a, the big three, if you will, are coming back. And you're talking about Tomas Giello, who was an outstanding player in the conference this year, uh, a big time scorer. Uh, Andrew Smith, what can you say? You know, we said it time and time again on our broadcast, his development as a player, not only inside, but his game has stepped out. We've seen penetration from him. He's a great piece to have back. And then you have Joe Reddick, you know, who, again, started very slowly, but really found himself as the season went on. And really now is a guy that you can feel can lead this team. So you've got those guys in place. Uh, we know we like Wes Alsager just in the little glimpses right. we've seen of him. And then you got Ryan Kemright over there who we've seen in workouts. He's redshirting this year, but what we've seen in workouts is a kid that really could come in and provide some scoring punch from the perimeter. So uh, not bear at all. I think I, I like what I see and uh, expect good things from him next year. And Tim, when we look at who's not coming back, not specifically the six seniors, but what deficiencies and holes are these new kids and even some of the returning guys, what holes are they going to have to fill? Well, obviously, you know, leadership is going to be big. And this team, in my opinion, had six seniors, but it was never one guy like they had when they had Jesse Sanders as a leader. I think Joe Reddick can step up and be that kind of player. He's already doing it on the court. He just has to come out of his shell a little bit in terms of being more vocal on the court. But he's a guy that can do that. But you mentioned, I mean, you have Tomas Giello, who really – deferred to some of those seniors in terms of being assertive. He didn't take his first shot today until the second half. Right. He's too good of a player, in my opinion, to do that. And next year, he'll have more than enough opportunities. I expect him to take 15 to 20 shots a game. And then you look at Andrew Smith, a guy who brings a lot of energy. But more importantly, as Paul just said, his game overall has developed. So the things that Liberty will look for is obviously some more scoring punch in the backcourt and they're going to lose some of that height advantage and that strength advantage that they had losing Burris, Coronado, and Vanderbilt. That's going to be tough to replace. But these younger guys that are coming in, there is some size coming in as well. But you know the experience is really going to be more important at this point for a bigger guy. So you can't expect those guys to come in and play like Burris played. But I think it's a lot of talent coming into this program. I'm excited. It's been a number of years since Liberty has had six defections of seniors on the men's basketball team. But head coach Dale Lair has coached a long time, and it's not going to be anything he hasn't experienced before entering this fall. I guess I've been doing this 33 years. It, it puts me in a, the old category. So there, are, there isn't a whole lot that I hadn't seen. So it will be different, obviously. It will be a challenge, as all teams are a challenge. But uh, I do like the guys that we have coming in, and I like uh, that we've got three really good starters back. And uh, I believe in the guys we have back, and I believe in the newcomers. And uh, but you know, I've been around a little bit, I guess, so it's not like it's something that I'm not prepared for. Um, I like the future of our program. Again, Winthrop wins it on Wednesday, 77-65. Liberty season ends at 11 and 21, and a fifth place finish again in the Northern Division. And that's going to wrap things up here from the HTC Center in Conway, South Carolina. For Tim Scarborough and Paul Naskin, I'm Alan York for the Liberty Flames Sports Network.